Frozen screenshot of dorkiness. Why? Hello. Hi, everyone. <laughs> I'm still trying to figure out the cameras. Oh my gosh. Okay, so the Instagram feed, Dave, is frozen. Do we have to restart with me making a terrible, terrible face? Do you want to come around and look? Mr. Producer happens to be here this morning. <laughs> right? So do I have to end this one? Because my preview is not going live. So open the preview. Open this. This takes it out of that. Okay, hang on, you guys. Bear with me. Try and figure this out. Fourteen of you are watching me make a hysterical face. Just ask them. Okay, comment on Instagram, those of you who are watching there. Is it frozen or is it not? Because on my camera, frozen all is camera. good, and on my feed, it looks good, except for on the Instagram page. It's so tricky to no, tell. it's frozen everywhere. Okay, so. So it's okay. Just hold on. Bear with us. Yes. Good thing Mr. Producer here is here. Okay, but now we're on cam on the, we're the camera. We're going to hang on a camera. sec. Now my computer is filming me. We're just going to change the camera here to the correct one. I can't read it. Is that the last one? This is, yep. Yeah. Okay. And it's just not zoomed in now. Oh my goodness. Okay, you're probably going to get a zoomed out. You can do it on the green button. Active track is enabled. Perfect. Don't mess with it. <laughs> Whoa, that was a project. Look at Instagram. Okay, just going to double check that Instagram is got a good feed going as well. I see. Good, good, good. It's working on YouTube. Okay. Whew. All the things. Well, hey, everyone. Thank you for chiming in. It is a little bit delayed, so that's not always helpful, but working now, working now, YouTube up. Yay. Grant is saying frozen on YouTube, but I think it's fixed now. Perfect. Good, good, good. Whew. It's always something, isn't it? This is what you Welcome need. to my studio. I am stitched by Susan, and look at this. This Mr. is what you need. Mr. After Producer a like that. is bringing me. Look at him. He's he's going to lean in. Oh, he You'll can't really. In. The there camera follows me. The camera knows who to focus in on, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Coffee in hand. How is everyone? I'd love to know where you're tuning in from. This morning's topic is going to be why I love. Free motion, edge to edge quilting, but I thought I would take just a couple sentences beforehand to introduce myself. I'm Susan Smith and I'm coming live each and every day in the entire month of April with topics relating to machine quilting. But maybe you've just caught one of these lives today for the first time or in the last couple days and don't know who I am. So let me tell you. I grew up in very, very Northern Canada, honestly pioneering with my parents. And um, I'll keep it a short story today, but one of the outcomes of that is my mother was a crafter, and I would say the old-fashioned crafts, the knitting, the crocheting, the quilting, and because we lived in the north, crafts were usually in the winter season. So I grew up doing all these things alongside my mom, particularly sewing and quilt making. So that has always been my love, and I have sewn things and worked with fabric and textiles for as long as I can remember, honestly. But in the last 10 years, I was introduced to machine quilting and then in quickly short succession to long arm machine quilting. And that's what I've been focusing on for the last number of years. I did begin by working at a domestic sewing machine before I graduated to a long arm. And so now this year, I'm getting back into working at a sit down machine because so many of you ask about my style of quilting and does it translate? And the answer is yes, it does. But of course, I don't want to just tell you that. I want to try to show you that. So all these topics in April um, relate as best I can on, on both fronts, whether you're working at a sit-down machine or whether you're working at a long arm on a frame. Um, I'm trying to cover topics that relate to both. And today's certainly does. So let me get a sip of coffee and we're going to dive in. So good, honestly. So delicious. The camera follows me while I set down my mug. Isn't that nice? Okay, let's see who's tuning in. Um, there were so many comments about the camera. I'll try not to go back to all of those. Okay, it's all good. Breathe. The quilting she shed says, yes. It'll all be fine. Uh, Dave, you look fabulous from Joan, Shelby Stitcher. It's so nice when he's home during, during my work hours. He is not very often. Kirsty, hello from Norway. You look normal again. Whew. Isn't it funny how the camera sometimes freezes on the oddest facial contortions? Uh, morning Madness. Good morning from Oklahoma City. Teresa, Thompson Hill, Natalie, Diane. 
The Quilting She Shed, I love free motion as well, coming to you from Lake of the Ozarks in Missouri. Another Susan in Texas. Wendy, Mr. Producer, is a keeper. You bet he is. Jean in Minnesota. Sue in Virginia. Victoria from Staffordshire, England. Awesome! Caught on live. You gotta love technology, Misty says. Oh yes, 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 you do. It's a love-hate relationship, isn't it? But where would we be? We wouldn't be visiting together if it wasn't for the technology, so still grateful. Joe in Ottawa, Ontario. Joan, about to start a large customer quilt with hibiscus. Awesome. Good. Okay, let's get started on our topic. Okay, so topic is why I love free motion edge to edge quilting. I think a little bit of a little bit of a glossary is called for beforehand. What is free motion? What is edge to edge? In case those are terms that you're not familiar with. Well, let's start here. Custom quilting is when we're talking machine quilting in all cases, but custom quilting is when the quilting is specific to blocks or borders or areas or has thread change colors or details that line up with the piecing of the quilt in many cases. Where edge to edge or all over quilting are exactly what the words say. It's from one edge of the quilt to the other edge of the quilt, the same quilting all over it. You don't stop for thread changes. You don't stop for different blocks or different designs in the border. It's just edge to edge. That's the kind of quilting I love most because the kind of quilts I love to make most are the kind that you snuggle up in on the couch the kind that you drag down to the beach with a toddler, the kind that a college kid takes off to their dorm, right? That's the kind of quilts I love to make, and I love to show that they can be beautiful and economical to make, creative, all the things. So right there, you've gotten a few reasons in summation. But the one reason that I thought might surprise you is, I firmly believe that doing this everyday type of quilting on your very ordinary quilts is honestly all the practice you need to create high level quilting skills. So that if and when down the road you do want to create a custom quilt, you want to make something special for a show, or maybe a wall hanging, or perhaps a golden anniversary gift and you want it to be something extraordinary, all those skills are already there. Let me give you a couple examples. Um, I do have an online masterclass, which I'll be talking about throughout this month. And I'm gonna give you some snippets from a couple of the lessons that are in there. And here's the first one. In the very first module, the very first lesson that I teach is actually quilting interconnected loops. That seems incredibly basic, doesn't it? But there's a few points I make with it. And one of them is loops are your opportunity to practice quilting round things. And if you learn while quilting the humble, loopy design, how to make round things when you're quilting at your machine, you can now do all kinds of things. You can quilt orange peel, you can quilt flowery arcs, you can quilt bubbles and pebbles as a fill. All kinds of things can be done by knowing how to quilt round things and do them well. Here's a second tip, also from the masterclass. There's a huge focus throughout that entire class on building skill in terms of controlling your machine. Um, kind of a funny story. When I travel to quilt shows, I travel with Bernina sometimes and, and work at kind of quilting trade shows, right? Just demonstrating the machine to any passerby that comes by and giving them an opportunity if they wish to stand and quilt at the machine. And it's kind of funny to see, you know, there are some people that are super slow and careful with every stitch, but there's quite a percentage of people that just whoosh that machine as fast as it will go. Even experienced quilters, they're like, I'm all about being fast. I want to get this quilt done and get on to the next one. Zoom, 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 zoom. I question whether they really have good control of their machine. Well, I don't question it. I know the answer. They don't. They're counting on centrifugal force to make curves or round things, for example. But what if you want to quilt an orange peel within a square from one point arcing to another point? Do you have the kind of control to end up at that point where you want to be? And this is my point when I talk about learning how to quilt round things and always being in control of your machine. So doing this everyday type of quilting with some of the humblest shapes in it, the circle being one of them, doing that purposefully and thoughtfully will build all the skills you need to do custom quilting if and when you want to. 
Just saying. So that's one of the reasons that I absolutely love edge to edge quilting because I don't have to do separate practice sessions. I typically don't do a ton of doodling sessions, although there's nothing wrong with that. If you're a doodler, that helps also, you know, to, to learn your thread path and where to go next. Absolutely. But you don't have to. You can get all the practice you need just by making quilts. It's pretty cool. So I'm curious. I'd love to hear some opinions on that. If you've got a differing opinion, I'd even love to hear it. And let's talk. Let's go back to the where we left off. Anne in the Canary Islands. Awesome. Barbara, Kathy, Selena, M. Lance, Diane, someone from Pittsburgh, Suzette, looking at a Q24. Don't think you'll be sorry. Gracie, Karen, lots of highs, which I so appreciate. Gabby, Teresa, Simone, Susie, Dorothy, Maria, lots and lots of you. I love custom quilts, Gabby is saying. You know, Gabby, many of us do, and I do too, to look at. Almost a discussion for another day, you know, when to make the choices. But for today, I'll just leave it at saying, typically what I make or what I make the most of is the couch quilts that are just going to get used, washed, loved, reused, etc. And so while I love the look of custom quilts and I even love making them from time to time, they're certainly not very economical in terms of operating a business or in terms of making quick gifts. So I also love edge to edge and showing that it can be super beautiful. Marco is saying that YouTube is frozen again. Marco, I think you should refresh your feed because it's looking fine on my screen so far. Fingers crossed. C. Claus, and where have you been all my life? Here I am. Another Susan, Joanne, Lucy. Okay, I'm going faster now. Kathy, the master class really elevated my quilting skills. I'm happy to hear that, Kathy. I've got some great student testimonials that I'll be bringing you guys later in the month. Jan loved the lesson on loops. Good. Okay, I don't see any major questions in here, so clearly no one's disagreeing with me so far. Um, I just find it an interesting concept. A lot of, um, I see quite a few machine quilters that really think in order to be a good quilter, a professional quilter, you've got to be good at the custom quilting and you have to do 40 or 50 custom quilts to get good at it. And I, and I don't agree with that. I honestly don't. So let's talk about a couple other reasons that I love free motion edge to edge quilting. Did we define free motion? I don't think we did. Let's talk about that for half a second. Truly, I need to publish a glossary of terms so that we're all talking on the same wavelength, right? Free motion or free hand, as quilters refer to it, just means that you're forming the quilting design free of any aids, right? There's no computer driving it. There's no groovy board guiding your stylus, for example, you're either freely moving the fabric under the needle as it's stitching, or you're grasping the handlebars and freely moving the needle over the fabric that you're stitching. So that's what free hand or free motion means to a quilter. Basically, it's like doodling. The long arm, we call it doodling with a 50 pound pencil. <laughs> that's kind of what it feels like. And so it is definitely a learned skill to, to be in control of that. But some of the reasons that I love freehand quilting, high on the list would be that it is unique and personal. So, you know, I might quilt a particular design and teach it in the master class to Joan or to Kathy. So they learn the design from me, but it's always going to become their own. Just like handwriting, you recognize your mom's handwriting, you recognize your best friend's handwriting, even though you're all using the same 26 letters of the alphabet, am I right? So Joan's flowers or Joan's swirls or even Joan's loops are going to look a little bit different from mine. And so it's going to be personal, but also because you're not tied to a pattern or a groovy board or a pattern on your screen, which all you can do is make, you know, you can make it smaller or larger, but you can't fundamentally change. When you're quilting freehand, you can change and add flourishes. One of my favorite flourishes that I see is quilters who add meaningful words into a quilt. So maybe they're quilting something for a little girl and they put in, you know, words like princess or, or blessed or beautiful, or, you know, maybe for a college grad and it's like character filled or I don't know, affirming words and putting those into a quilt. Like how special is that? 
or meaningful. I saw one come across Instagram the other day. It was for a particular person and he had a lot of tattoos and his tattoos had been made into these quilting designs and put all over his quilt. Hey, that's personal. That can be done at a computer and a, you know, a digital design and you can program it, etc., etc. But how much more fun is it to just doodle that out, am I right? So you can make it so, so very personal, however far you want to go with that however far you want to go. Shelby Stitcher, which is Joan. Let me see if I can put this on the screen, Joan. Some of my customers had their heart set on custom work, but none have been dissatisfied with all over free motion quilting after getting their quilts back. I mean, that's super encouraging to know because Joan, you're in my camp. We're, we're out to educate people that all over quilting can still be really, really beautiful. I think that that's a trap that some some quilt makers have fallen into is thinking that edge to edge quilting is sort of second best it's like settling for the cheap end of quilting and if i want this quilt to be a special gift why then it has to have custom quilting and and i don't agree with that one either i do think that edge to edge quilting can be super super beautiful and it's my mission to show you how you can do that Susan says, hi to Dave. Victoria, I've practiced edge to edge quilting with all your advice on some charity quilts. The ladies are really happy with my quilting. I'm super glad to hear that. Scarlett, I made it. Love free motion quilting. Wilma, love your explanation. Thank you. Amy Fryan, I'm quilting someone's tattoos right now. It was your post I saw, Amy. So there you go. <laughs> Maria in Salvador. Awesome. So I hope that gives you some great ideas. I'm trying to think just off the cuff. What are some of the other things I love? Like some are kind of obvious. You don't have to purchase patterns. So it's an inexpensive way to quilt. You don't have to purchase a computerized system, which even at the entry level ones are usually a couple thousand dollars and they go way up there to many thousands. You have to quilt a lot of quilts to, to make that pay. Um, so that's one big reason. It's economical. It's also quite economical, honestly, for time because there's no need to size it because you're just doing it as you go with your eyeballs. There's no need to have a pattern repeat and then get the next repeat to fit or line up with it, right? There's no need for that. You can scale it bigger or larger just as fast as your mind can think, right? You can do it. So there's any number of ways that it's economical time-wise to just be able to load a quilt onto the long arm rails or under your sewing machine and just start quilting. Minimal marking, you know, minimal planning. You're just quilting, you're just doodling and it does become so personal and lovely. Um, Selena, I've done the words on quilts. One for my mom with all her names and such on it. One for my daughter's wedding quilt with their names and sayings on it. So fun. Yes, and that opportunity is Fabulous. So personal. I just can't think of anything sweeter than having that quilted into a project. Angie, I think there's a semantic difference between free motion and free hand. Okay, I'm going to put this on screen. You guys can all read this with me. Oh gosh, it's long. I guess I'm not because it'll cover up my face totally. Free motion means that you can move the machine freely in any direction. Free hand means exactly what you're saying. You know, I definitely see your point, Angie. Um, but we are talking to a great big wide world of quilters and I'm trying to use general terms and to some people they mean different things. You clearly love words and their, and their detailed meanings and I love that and I appreciate that and I'll come back and read your comment fully because maybe that will help make my explanations clearer. But generally speaking, free motion and free hand are used interchangeably at this point among machine quilters to mean the same thing. Whatever the quilting design is, there's nothing driving it but your hands. Yeah, I, I, I do love your explanation. All free hand is free motion, but not all free motion is free hand. True. And I might put a tiny caveat in here. At quilt shows, I'll see often quilts hanging that will say in the description that they are hand guided. That to me means quite a different thing because that can actually include all kinds of ruler work. So every wave might be quilted with a ruler. Every wave is precise and consistent because it had a ruler, but it is still qualifies as hand guided. So there's just one more definition to add to the mix. Anyway, I think we've covered a lot of topics this morning. So once again, I am live each and every day for the month of April, YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook. If you're enjoying these episodes, please, please, 
do give them a thumbs up, subscribe, and also click the notification bell and you'll be notified whenever I'm coming live next. And by the way, the lawnmower is right outside my window if you can hear that. First time this spring. I might have to get going earlier in the day to avoid those sounds. Um, anyway, all these lives are leading up to the release of my freehand quilting masterclass later in April and it's going to be a new addition having demos at the long arm machine on a frame and also having demos at my sit down domestic sewing machine. So I am working hard on that in the background and really enjoying coming and talking with all of you each and every day. So until tomorrow, have a great day and I will see you next time.